Okay, so I just got done watching um, Good Morning Call Season 2, Episode 1. All my days, this is hype. Such a good show already. I'm so happy we're getting all uh, you know Season 2. I even posted on Reddit as well, like, the brother, I'm telling you guys, this, this shit's happening. But no one believed me, but here we are. Season 2 is out. In fact, all of Season 2 is out because it's on Netflix. You know, Instant 2, we've already filmed it, just have everything now. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at, at the moment. So I've only watched episode one. I'll do this for all of the other episodes because honestly, the show's pretty good. Oh, what's he doing? There we go. There we go. So yeah, basically, season two's out. Go watch it. It's good. Also watch season one. Season one's actually pretty damn good too. Um, I, I thought the show was like the, one of the best things I watched all year. And I was watching Buddy Dead at the same time. I was like, this shit's still better than that. So what the hell is the present doing? So anyway, here we go. Let's get into it, okay? Season two, episode one. Let me set the premise up for you guys, okay? So. Basically, season at the end of season one, we know that Nao and Uruhara are basically like you know banging each other. They're, they're kind of all set at this point. Um, and as the name suggests, our campus days means it's going to be like a whole new learning environment or a new environment at least. Um, spoilers: it's university. Um, so it starts off as like some wedding bells, like swinging. And by the way, these are some budget-looking wedding bells. I mean, it only gets worse because basically it starts from the top of the church, then it pans down to like a. Um, to the front of the church and we've got some cgi looking doors seriously go back watch that part again the doors are look terrible they don't even look like they're part of the actual uh, of the environment like they're actually moving around their thing you know like i'm sure netflix could have at least a, you know bought applied for some you know better looking cgi uh, artists and stuff like that because this is pretty bad uh, even still whatever netflix i don't really care at the end of the day but those, those cgi doors and bells did not set a good you know starting for the show already especially for someone who's not even seen it before but yeah anyway you can clearly tell at this point this is a wedding it's it's clearly some sort of uh, imagination of now going running wild like she always does because that's just the way now works she's always imagining things and daydreaming about Harakun and some other stuff <clears throat> so yeah she wakes up it's all a dream at this point we've got the kind of prem it pans it cuts over to uh, the school from season one turns out all the kids there are graduating which is so this is kind of where they transition off into uni. Mm, we got our boys and girls back. We got Marina, Mitsushi, and uh, obviously now Abe makes an appearance. Best character of season one. It is cool to see this guy back. I'm glad that he's not been kicked off or anything like that. Um, it's a shame we won probably won't be seeing Issei. I reckon he'll make a comeback or appearance in some of the episodes later on. Hopefully he does. He's a pretty good character, but Abe, best character, season one, by far. So all of these guys are off to uni new, new universities. I mean, as with all of these kind of shows, you know, band of friends going on, they all stay with each other. So even if they're at different unis, they're all going to be together. That's kind of basically the premise of this. A few of them are together, a few of them are at different unis, but they're only across the road and stuff like that. So, um, also, I want to put it out there, Marina's hair. Mmm, damn, you're looking good. That's some good looking hair. <laughs> you know, season two upgrades. Um, uh, and then we get introduced to a new girl. Her name's Ota. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Ota, Uta. Like Uta from like The Simpsons, you know, like, Uta, the German guy, um, all of season two. I mean, spoilers, also because she's in the intro as well, so it's clearly obvious that's going to be, you know, she's going to be a main staple character of the series. So at this point, they go to university, and all the girls are already like, Oh, Madame Ura Harakun, I want you. All their ovaries just exploding all over the screen, you know, stuff like that. Um, Urahara walking around with his hands in his pockets and his bag over his shoulder, like, man, look at me, I'm fucking Jin Kazama from Tekken. Walking around, stuff like that. No, he doesn't really care, but at the same time, he does care. He then gets chased off screen, at which that, at which point we see uh, now, like all dressed up, like in disguise, well, really badly. And then she bumps into some like bell ends. Now I'm, you can tell already, right? This guy's gonna be a dick, because basically every time this guy, by the way, his name is Natsume Shu, Shu Natsume. Every time he says something, he has this shitty eating grin at the end of his sentence, like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck you over." Ha. You know, like, if you've ever seen The Room, whenever Tommy Wiseau finishes a sentence, he just starts laughing. This guy, every time he finishes a sentence, he's got this really, like, derpy, derpy looking, like, yeah, I'm going to do something for you, maybe something bad. Or, like, I'm clearly up to something because I'm a prick like that, you know. Um, so that's this, that's this guy. So she bunts him to him, and already he gives off that kind of vibe, like, he's going to be a bit of a prick. Um... And it turns out he's like, oh, you were trying to get my number. And she was like, nah, go away. I've got a boyfriend. You know, like, my boyfriend's like the fourth hottest guy in university, according to statistics of, like, no one. Um, or actually, I wouldn't even say no one. It's pretty much everyone who's already put up a poster about all the potential candidates coming in. Uruhara's on there. 
Seeing as how he was like top three in the high school, he's now top four university. So we'll see where that whole kind of little side story goes. Um, yeah, she bumps into this guy. Then this guy walks off. He then ends up back at sc on screen in another location where he meets Urahara sitting there trying to eat his onigiri. Uh, which, by the way, like, so Urahara runs off screen from these girls and then the little now thing happens. He meets this, he meets Urahara sitting at the top of the stairs and this guy's about to open up his lunchbox. It even says, for comedic effect, this lunchbox contains, has the volume capacity of a hundred or, no, 1625 milliliters. He brings out the onigiri, I swear, like the size of this guy's face. He's about to eat it, some girls like jump at him and he drops his onigiri and he gets fucking pissed because, one, that'd be me, that onigiri looked godlike. But two, the onigiri itself, you know, I mean, it went down some dirty looking stairs. You're only going to go pick that up and you know, what the hell's wrong with you? So he manages to get the girls off him. That Natsumo Shu guy is like, Oi Belens, do you want to come with me? I can save you from all these girls. And he's like, alright, fine, yeah, whatever. He takes him to the science lab. And at this point here, he's like, by the way, uh, I'm going to rescue you. And we're now basically best friends. Just putting that out there. And Uruha was like, yeah, cool. Well, I guess we're best friends then. I guess that's how friendships work and stuff. He also tells them that in, in this cupboard, we keep like food. Like, I don't know why you want to keep food in a science lab. That's one of the worst places you want to be eating. You really want to have, like, some little Petri dish with potassium on it. And then you have, like, your, your ramen. If you put your potassium little ball in, like, that ramen dish and it just it blows up in your face, what's the point? Why did you do that? Why would you keep food inside a science lab? It doesn't matter. You can use a Bunsen burner to cook it. But, you know, whatever. That, that's another topic. Some crazy science lady comes out. Kind of hot, I'm going to be honest. Um, and she starts, like, having a go at Urahara for not, like, having some humidity Bunsen burner thing. I don't know. Whatever. Um, at this point, we cut back to the cafeteria era. Abe is here, and by the way, he's sporting like a like a some visual K new look or something like that. You know, he's got pretty sick looking hair. I'm gonna be honest, it's pretty good. Got a damn good hairstylist, probably the same one that does Marina's. Um, and then he also advertises that by the way, there's gonna be some like uh, matchmaking party for some reason. Um, now is like, yeah, fine, I'll do that. I'm gonna teach Urahara a lesson by going to meet all these boys. I don't know why she would want to do that. But, you know, she's, I guess she's trying to make a point or something. Oh, everyone. So you've got Ota, Marina, Now, and Abe all go to this party, right? And it's basically, again, it's a hookup party. Everyone's, it's like Tinder, but in real life or something like that. <laughs> Except if you're Japanese and kind of weird and socially awkward. Um, now it's like, oh, fuck. I guess I'm kind of fucked now. Man, I really fucked up. And all the guys want, want like, Ota because she's like, not had a boyfriend or something like that. I don't know, whatever. Um, so they play some, like, kind of sexy games. Like, she has to put, like, a carrot in her mouth or something like that. And then she has to go with, like, some fat Rock Lee from Naruto, who's like, oh, yeah, I want you. How about you put this rubber band over this and we'll play some sexy games just so I can get closer to you. And then Urahara also turns up at this party, by the way, about midway through because... So, like I said, this this Natsume guy, he's he's clearly a scheming prick. He's like, oh, I'm going to sabotage things and set you guys up just to get you annoyed again at each other and stuff like that. So he's like, hey, Urahara, do you want to come to this party with me? Turns out this party is the same matchmaking party that now is at, where everyone's going to try and, you know, get smoochy smoochy and shit like that with each other. Um, so obviously, Urahara's there, like, watching, like, Why, what the hell are you doing? Um, basically, they start playing some, like, sexy games and stuff to introduce each other. Now gets cornered, and she's like, oh, fuck, this fat Rot Lee's gonna start trying to make his moves on me. To it, at which point, Urahara's like, motherfuckers, slams it down the table, full adventure, like, nani? And then he's like, everyone shut the fuck up, by the way, this chick's my girlfriend. And everyone's like, ho ho! And then obviously, because it's Natsume, he's got that shitty grin with his bad teeth. By the way, I don't know why that's his quirk. I mean, this is coming from an English person, right, who's... who's uh, the stereotype is we've all got bad teeth. No, this guy's got bad teeth. You want to give this guy his quirk as being like, oh, he smiles at the end of every sentence? Nah, that's a bad idea. Do not do that. That's a stupid idea. But this guy just does not stop smiling. Don't know why. He just does. He just smiles all the time at the end of the sentence. And you have to see this guy's teeth every time. It's so bad. Anyway, so Uruha was like, oh, all you guys are dickheads. This is my girlfriend. What the fuck are you guys doing? And then they both walk out together. Because obviously it's pointless her being a matchmaking party. She's already got like the fourth hottest guy in university. <laughs> so they walk out. Uruha's like, you're an idiot. Why the hell are you with this at uh, this matchmaking party when you got matchmaking party when you got me? You're my girlfriend. And I was like, what the fuck? You just said you're my I'm your girlfriend. That's that's crazy. I think I'm like my ovaries are getting, you know, rumbly tumbly all over you and stuff like that. <laughs> so that's that's good. A little bit of a... Uh, heartwarming session there that obviously uh, Uruha has now finally just mentioned the, the phrase 
Um, and yeah, now was really stupid for going to the dinner party thing anyway. So they all go back home. Um, there are so now and Urahara go back home, and then um, as he's about to, about to come in, that Natsume guy follows him back. Cause he's a fucking weirdo. Like I said, this guy's a scheming prick. He, he you know he's up to some shenanigans, you know, cloak and dagger business. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna stay with your guys for a bit, and then um, now goes out to go get some milk pudding and stuff. All right, cool, whatever. That's that's the thing, milk pudding. Yo, I've never had milk pudding, but that shit looks fucking amazing. I hope they sell it here. I'm gonna have to go like to my fucking local co-op or some shit like that and see if they've got like this milk pudding. I mean, I doubt they do, but you know that milk pudding that you guys have in Japan looks godlike. I'm gonna have to try and import some stuff or I don't know, find it somewhere. I'm sure there's some weirdo place here in central London. That shit. So ever since I saw that, I was like, man, I want that. That looks, that stuff looks good. Anyway, so she goes out to go get milk pudding, comes back, and then as she's crossing the road, she falls over, and then there's my boy Daichi, fucking Evo champion himself, Daichi, coming in with a sure you can. Um, he was definitely one of the best characters in season one. Glad to see him back. Um, basically, at the end of about halfway through season one, he ended up going to university. Um, and then now, and then season one carries on, <laughs> and then here we are, where Daichi is now going to be another one, of, another one of the kind of staple characters. He's also in the intro as well, which is pretty good. Oh, what is all this? So Take all this, hell yeah! I'll grab all that. Don't mind if I do. What the hell? So anyway, um, yeah, Daichi's back, which is cool. We're going to be seeing that character a lot more. He's good. He's one of the best. I think he was like he was also in top three as well in like the high school that they all went to and stuff. So yeah, that's good. It's good to see him back. <laughs> so, what happens next? So at this point, this guy, this this Natsume guy, Shu Natsume, who's clearly a prick, he's like, by the way, I'm going to stay over at your house. Obviously, um, they're not agreeing to it. Um, oh wait, wait, wait! I forgot to mention the best part. So after they go out, they all come back right from the the party, and they have this really good door scene. I was like, oh man, I'm proper like blushing right now and stuff like that. I mean, good thing I'm watching this on my own. But she, they're like, they're probably having like a little nice scene. Then in comes the cop blocker himself, uh, Shu Natsume, to go, Oh yeah, by the way, can I stay at your house? You've got no choice. Um, so they're like, fine. This Urahara was like, he's kind of my friend, but not really my friend. He's clearly a prick. I don't really like him that much. But he did give me free food inside this, inside the chemistry lab. So he's going to be staying with, I guess, in this, staying with us in this case. They were going to be staying together. He had a nice little hug scene, but then he comes and, you know, cock blocks the whole thing. Um, so, they stay over they stay over at their house. He stays over at their house, even. And then, end of season one, right? Uh, Natsumo's like, oh... Now was like, alright, cool, I'm gonna go and press Urahara in the morning. She goes over and accidentally confuses the guy in bed with Urahara. So, Natsume with Urahara. Um, and then Natsume pulls her head towards him and gives her a kiss. Same as what happened in the end of season one, basically, where she accidentally gets kissed while... Um, the guy's asleep. Urahara was asleep, but in this case, you can tell Urahara did it on purpose. He's like, oh shit, I'm tired, guess I'm gonna give you a kiss. And then Urahara's standing there like, what the fuck, you just kissed this dickhead, what, what are you doing, why are you cheating on me? You know, Jeremy Kyle level shit right here, I can see that stuff happening right now. Um, so that's kind of the premise. And that's, we've been introduced to new characters, we've got Ota and uh, Shu Natsume. We've got the reoccurring characters, so Marina, Mitsushi, um, obviously Urahara and Nell. And obviously my boy Abe, um, and then we've also got the um, new, the reoccurring newcomer, uh, old, no, reoccurring, reoccurring from the past, which is Dice uh, Daichi. Got the kind of itself, and that they're a new environment at university, and they also have to, um, they also have to deal with the fact that now now's kissed this uh, Nats, Natsume guy, because I don't know, I don't get what the fuck this, why this guy is such an ass like that, but. Yeah, that's kind of the premise we've got. So I'm interested to see where season uh, episode two goes of season two. Um, I'm actually really happy we've got a season two. I was thinking maybe we didn't actually ha need to actually have one, but we do. And I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good. But yeah, man, this shit is hype. Like fucking Urahara needs to go in and like show you can this guy in the face because you know if we don't get a fight scene, I'm going to be pretty pissed. That's what I'm, that's what I want to see. I want to see now punch someone in the face as well. How good would that be? 